So how much solar power can we really harvest for one of our solar powered electric vehicles? That is, you know, how many miles can we actually get on a given day? And how many miles can we travel? You know, these, these figures really are quite contingent on a few factors. Of course, is it sunny out? All right, number one. Is it summertime? In other words, is that sun up in the sky for a long period of time? And is it high in the sky so it's not shooting through a bunch of atmosphere? Also, of course, it depends on the temperature outside because that's going to determine just kind of what, what range your batteries are going to see. So a little cooler temps are going to bring down your range a little bit. But I want to just mention that it's also important to remember that these vehicles can also plug in. So it's not like you buy a solar powered vehicle and it's like, oh, gee whiz, it's not, it's not sunny out. I can't go anywhere. The idea with the solar power in any sense, and that includes ground mount systems, um, solar panels on your house, you make, you make hay when the sun shines. You make your power when the sun shines. And you do your best um, in between time to be frugal with your energy if uh, that concerns you. And you try to operate on the sun. So it has a lot to do with planning. The thing that we're used to these days is just to plug into the wall. So we just grab that cord and we plug into the wall. We don't think about it. A bill comes in the mail a little bit later. Maybe we think about that a little bit. But for the most part, we're kind of unaware of our energy usage. So with solar powered vehicles, and as I mentioned, you can plug it in. So it gives you the opportunity to be more aware with the energy that's coming in your vehicle. And if you're not in a big hurry, you can chillax, you can relax. You can let that solar power just keep raining down from the sky and filling up your vehicle. As a camper, we found it to be the most ideal situation. You spend a couple days somewhere enjoying local cuisine and local people and local geography. And by the time you're ready to go, your rig is full. So if you were to follow the Route del Sol project, Joel Gregory Hayes, Joel did just that. He said that he was always ready to go before he was. And that is a pretty amazing thing. One thing I'd like to mention is there's the potential to pull 200 miles of range from the sun in one day. The advent of the thin film solar panels have given us the ability to not really have to worry about weight and to not really have to worry about volume. They're very thin, they can be stacked up and they're very lightweight. So um, I just did a little measurement in the shop for fun and 420 watts of the light leaf solar were 20 pounds. The light leaf solar panels are already have a carbon fiber rigid back. So you can pretty much lean those up. In fact, we did a little experiment with uh, Louis, Louis's bus. Check out Fun for Louis and his Volkswagen bus. We did a little experiment just threw some of the light leaf panels up there. They weren't anywhere near the right um, voltage. And there was definitely, you know, a lot more that could have been done. But it's a little teaser just right there as to see, you know, just grab a few panels and what you actually get. Because I think a lot of people, you know, hear a lot of things about solar powered vehicles. And, you know, some people over here are saying it's not worth doing. Some people over here are saying it's amazing. What the reality is, is what we want to bring to you. And here at Solarola, we've been involved in this reality for well over 10 years now. Um, with our first bus, our first solar powered electric VW bus, really seeing, you know, what is the reality? And I'm telling you, the reality is amazing. And it will change you. It will change how you drive. It'll change, believe it or not, how you live and how you camp, because you're looking at different variables now. And that is really the big difference. So if you want to go about it with your gasoline mine and just expect, you know, to not think about it, you may find yourself in some predicaments. But if you really think about the reality of the situation, which is, hey, let's look at what the weather is supposed to be like and maybe plan our camping trip around that. And of course, let's face it, nobody wants to go camping in the rain. So it works really well for a camper. And also because campers have awnings, the solar roller vehicles have awnings. And um, these awnings, of course, are solar panels. So like I mentioned, 420 watts of solar, 20 pounds. So for example, when we brought Redfoo, his solar powered electric e-star we brought just under five kilowatts of solar with us so i mean that was maybe 250 300 pounds of solar so if you think about it on a 15,000 pound vehicle what's another 250 pounds that's another healthy young man right there 
and that's a whole nother five kilowatts of solar, we're talking the ability to pull up to 200 miles of range. Now, where does this equation really go? So it would be really nice to push a button and have all of the panels just shoot out the sides of our vehicle and automatically adjust and track into the sun. But what that does is it kind of creates a little bit of a bottleneck for us because we can't really deploy that many panels doing that. We'll be able to get the top of the vehicle and maybe two awnings. But what happens if we want to pull 200 miles of range on this vehicle? Well, we're going to have to have what we call satellite panels. And these are panels that are stored somewhere on the vehicle that we'll pull out later and we'll, we'll place in various locations um, to pull solar power. Um, the light leaf solar panels, rigid as they are, can provide structures for, say, an outdoor bathroom or a little outdoor shower house, all while pulling solar power for the vehicle. Maybe you want to make a secondary structure for um, some people to camp in. That's totally possible. And that's a second kind of a dual purpose way of, of having more panels with you and creating more space in your camping situation. And of course, creating more and faster charging. This equation is getting pretty exciting. And the way I see it going is we will just keep putting more and more solar panels on vehicles, um, drawer slides, satellite panels, whatever it may be. So once again, check out the little um, experiment we did with Louis's vehicle with some light leaf panels. So yeah, as I said, we just leaned up some of our kind of excess panels onto Louis's bus because it was close to the power point of the panels. So if you're not loading your panels at the power point, you're not getting nearly the rated power out of them. But we were close. I think our maximum power point would have been right around 200 volts and we were charging about 160. So once again, not maximum by any means, but close enough to do a little test and just show you all what we got. Also, I live in kind of a little bit of a bowl. So I live in the forest and, you know, by the time the, you know, the sun needs to get up a good 10 o'clock, you know, 930 before anything can start hitting around here. And then it's, it's done by about 430, maybe five o'clock at this time of year. And of course we are coming into winter now. So also include that. Um, take a look at the spreadsheet. So this is Tony's awesome nerdery. We love having Tony around. He gets it down to the numbers, no BS, gets it on a graph, um, took readings all day and can really show you exactly what happened there. And it looks like he's got an energy uh, stored in kilowatt hours of about 14.5. So 14,500 watt hours was what we were able to pick up on this fall day here in Northern Wisconsin which equates to about 50 miles of range. So considering about 300 watt hours per mile, let me grab my trusty calculator. So at 14.5, divide that by 300, that's 48 miles, a little over 48 miles of range. So look to see about 75 if you get your, if you get your maximum power point right and if you get a little bit better exposure. And that's just in the wintertime, pretty amazing. So I don't know how many of you drive much more than 75 miles in a day, but look at it this way. Maybe today you got 75 miles and you went 30 and tomorrow it's cloudy. So you have a little bit of extra. So that's what's nice about the bigger battery packs is you can store that up and use it during your cloudy days. So just a little tidbit for you, just to kind of another little example to get you uh, get, get, get the feel for exactly what you can pull um, in these vehicles. Thank you.